In this video, I will prove that using Newton's method on the arctangent or inverse tangent of x fails to converge if the initial x is greater than this value, or about 1.3917, or less than the negative version of this value. This will require knowledge on how Newton's method works, as well as one of the many formulas named after Euler, e to the i x equals cosine x plus i sine x. To start, one key fact about arc tan x is that it is an odd function. This means two things. One, applying Newton's method starting with negative values is the same as with positive values, just with the sines flipped. So we can basically just ignore negative starting values. Two, if after one iteration Newton's method returns a negative value with greater magnitude than the initial value, then it will continue to diverge. The boundary must be, then be when, after an iteration, you get to a negative number with the same magnitude as the initial value. In other words, we're looking for a value of x such that negative x is equal to x minus f prime of x. Since f of x is equal to arctan x and f prime of x is equal to x squared plus 1, we can substitute those in to get 2x over x squared plus 1 is equal to arctan x. Now that we have our equation, we can get to solving it. Taking the tangent of both sides gets x equals tangent of 2x over x squared plus 1. Since tan is sine over cosine, we can multiply both sides by cosine of 2x over x squared plus 1 to get x cosine of 2x over x squared plus 1 is equal to sine of 2x over x squared plus 1. We can then use the exponential forms of sine and cosine to rewrite this expression as x over 2 times e to the negative i 2x over x squared plus 1 plus e to the i times 2x over x squared plus 1 equals i over 2 times e to the negative i 2x over x squared plus 1 minus e to the i 2x over x squared plus 1. Multiplying everything by 2e to the 2ix over x squared plus 1 gives us x times 1 plus e to the i 4x over x squared plus 1 is equal to i 1 minus e to the i 4x over x squared plus 1. Some algebra gives us i minus x is equal to i plus x e to the 4x over x squared plus 1. We can rewrite e to the i times 4x over x squared plus 1 as cosine of 4x over x squared plus 1 plus i sine 4x over x squared plus 1. And we can do more algebra to separate the real and imaginary parts. Since x is a real number, we can treat the real and imaginary parts as two separate equations. Negative x is equal to x cosine 4x over x squared plus 1 minus sine of 4x over x squared plus 1. And 1 is equal to cosine 4x over x squared plus 1 plus x sine 4x over x squared plus 1. We can substitute the second equation into the first equation to get x times 1 minus x sine 4x over x squared plus 1 minus sine of 4x over x squared plus 1 is equal to negative x. This simplifies to 2x over x squared plus 1 is equal to sine of 4x over x squared plus 1. And dividing both sides by 4x over x squared plus 1 gives 1 half is equal to sine of 4x over x squared plus 1 over 4x over x squared plus 1. Here is where we enter special function territory. The unnormalized sinc function is defined to be equal to sine of x over x. So arc sinc should be the inverse of sine of x over x. Taking the arc sinc of both sides gives arc sinc of 1 half is equal to 4x over x squared plus 1. Multiplying by x squared plus 1 and shuffling terms around gives us arc sinc of 1 half x squared minus 4x plus arc sinc of 1 half is 0. This is the quadratic, which can be solved using the quadratic formula, which yields x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 4 arc sinc of 1 half squared all over 2 times arc sinc of 1 half. Disregarding the minus solution and simplifying gives us our final answer of x equals 2 plus the square root of 4 minus arc sinc of 1 half squared all over arc sinc of 1 half. Now that we know about this function arc sinc of x, it becomes natural to ask what properties it has, how it behaves, or what it even is. Well, you're going to have to wait until the next video for that.